Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Conan's show. This is uh, the 24th of January, 2018. We're going out live, Woodstock TV, 56 Rock City Road at 7 p.m. And I would like to, as always, thank Paula Gloria Barton for teching for me tonight. And now that we are down to a couple of lights and one camera. Uh, so uh, everybody out there in TV land, if you care about your local access TV studio, and this is going to be a little bit of a subject tonight, do give the uh, town supervisor, Bill McKenna, a call at the town offices and say, hey, put some money into our, uh, into our uh, movie uh, TV studio. And including the public library as well. Uh, that's to call them, right? Yeah. Yeah, call. They, they say they're part of this operation. Yes, okay. So, so par apparently the, the, the library board is uh, part of the uh, TV station. Uh, it's new to me. So they're, they're making claims here. We're, Who are we're watching TV Woodstock. Producers and and we, we have a claim to the TV <laughs> studio uh, primarily because we are in it and using it and making original content for you. Okay, so now then. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things on my mind tonight, and uh, I think, um, you know, I was thinking a little bit about the legal win we just had, and, and I, was, I was thinking of uh, maybe mentioning real quickly that uh, my good friend and partner, Laura, has been exonerated in the uh, Saugerties Town Court with a uh, dismissal in the interest of justice because there was no evidence and no police investigation. These are the reasons that were given that we were dragged through the courts for two and a half years of pain uh, for no reason. How do you like that, folks? Okay, so moving right along. Uh, in the past couple of days, you know, every, every so often, uh, well, pretty much every day, I check YouTubes just to see what's going on out there in, in a variety of uh, uh, topics of interest of mine. Some is uh, archaeology, some is um, new technology, some is, you know, political activism, what's going on out there in the world of uh, 5G and uh, wireless technology and, um, and environmental issues and, and uh, things of this nature. So, you know, I, I like to see who's posting what out there. And then this uh, real interesting event that I was not aware of uh, came to my attention, uh, I think, Today, was that today? No, it, was yesterday. it was yesterday. So it was yesterday, and what it is is, is a, there has been uh, an apparent fireball or meteor or fireball meteor that has uh, landed uh, in uh, the outskirts of Detroit um, and had exploded uh, shortly before making uh, uh, contact with the, with the Earth. Uh, and there are uh, some interesting uh, YouTube, uh, citizen YouTube videos out there that apparently have been appropriated by uh, WXYZ TV out there in, in uh, Michigan. Uh, and a lot of the original um, content has, has sort of been appropriated by, by the big uh, uh, corporate TV uh, news uh, channel out there. Um, but m more interesting than that is a young woman has posted a, um, her own YouTube video kind of covering not so much her direct experience being in the, in, in the uh, neighborhood, uh, but, you know, she addresses her e experience of the event, which was three booms in quick succession. Boom, 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 like that. And, and, and apparently it was very loud. And it uh, really got her attention as she was uh, either reading a book or something in her bedroom. Uh, we're going to play uh, a, a, a good portion of her um, uh, video upload here. Uh, fair use, guys. This is for education only. We're not trying to profit on anything here. And it's only three and a half minutes. Yeah. Wow. It seems so much longer than that. Wow. Uh, so it's about three and a half minute clip. And, and I want you to... Uh, see this little video of hers, and uh, then we'll come back to the discussion. So uh, okay. if you're ready to cue that up, we'll go right to it.
so loud and it shook my bed and it happened so quickly that I was like, gosh, who could it be? Hey guys, it's Tuesday, 10, 18 on January 16th, 2018. And I just had a very strange experience about two hours ago. I was sitting in my bed watching the Mike Winger podcast. It had just started and about 8, 10 p.m. because my phone call happened at 8, 12. I, uh, I felt, I heard both at the same time, a boom, 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 like a big, huge three series, maybe four, boom, 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 um, bang and and it was so loud and it shook my bed and it happened so quickly that I was like gosh who could it be I mean I have a friend who will sometimes you know knock really hard on my door and kind of you know just joke around uh so I called that friend and I'm like where are you and he's like I'm at my apartment and I was like okay well because I I guess then you're not here I don't know what that boom was but there was a there was a huge boom and he's like, oh, you, I heard it too. He's like, I thought it was the guys above me. And so he's in an apartment building, and he thought it was somebody dropping or throwing something on the floor above where he lives. And so then we both obviously discovered in those, the very short phone call that it was something that we experienced, and we're a couple miles apart from each other. So then I called another friend who I said, uh, where are you? And they're like, oh, I'm on, my road, on the road driving north on I-75. And I said, did, did you just hear this crazy boom? You know, and because I, I figured they probably didn't, though, after they said they were on the road. And he's like, yeah, I just heard it. I was just driving, you know, I was just about, you know, south of Jocelyn Road area, and I just heard it. He said, uh, he goes, I'm surprised that, uh, he said, I'm surprised that you heard it, too. Like, we were all kind of putting, putting these pieces of the puzzle together. So then I found out from another friend who's about 10 miles south of me in the Detroit area that they heard it and felt it. Um, the person who was driving, though, did not seem to have felt it, but they definitely heard it going 75 miles an hour on the expressway, so that's pretty interesting. So then, just for the heck of it, I called another friend who's out in Kalamazoo. That's, that's halfway to Chicago from where I am, and uh, they're about 180 miles away from me. And I asked them, I'm like, did you just feel something or hear something? No, they didn't hear or feel anything. Okay, so it's contained within from what I can locate logistically about a 40 mile radius of where I am. I looked on the earthquake map, there was nothing on the earthquake map. And uh, nobody saw anything. That's the thing that I wanna emphasize here, is that nobody in my circle that I contacted saw anything, everybody felt something. So then, there was nothing on the earthquake map, so then this thing pops up here on Detroit News. Now this article is just very strange, so I wanna read it to you. Suspected meteorite buzzes Metro Detroit. Metro Detroiters from Ann Arbor, which is about 35 miles to the west of me, um, to Rochester, which is about 10 to 15 miles to the east of me, reported a flashing light and a loud boom that is believed to have been a meteorite hitting the earth Tuesday around 8.15. Okay, so this was posted within 45 minutes of the event and I'm just wondering, who? Who believes that this was a meteorite hitting the Earth? That answer, who, is what I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused about because we're not getting any sources for this, okay? We don't know who says this was a meteorite. Sending authorities scurrying to find the cause. Well, right there, that's a contradiction. If the authorities are scurrying to find the cause of the loud boom and light, then why are they believing it's a meteorite? I mean, the authorities don't need to scurry for a meteorite. So who are the authorities that think it's a meteorite? And who are the authorities who are scurrying? Right there, that's not made clear. This is where it starts getting weird, though. The National Weather Service said they received multiple reports from around Metro Detroit of a flash and a boom beginning about 8, 10 p.m. They could not confirm that a meteor had hit the Earth. Okay, first of all, I don't, do we use, we might, I don't know, do we use the National Weather Service to confirm a meteor hits the earth? I don't know, is that in their job description? But my bigger question is, who? Who are these people who would call the National Weather Service to make multiple reports of a loud boom and light? I mean, of all the people I talked to, I think that would probably be the last, that would probably be the last official's number on our list that we would call to report. I mean, none of us had any instinct to call, but if we did, 
it would probably be like to the police or something, not to the National Weather Service. I don't know, maybe people do that, but. So here it goes on with weirdness, okay? It says from this guy, Mike Tarkowski of Milford. He's, he's quoted, now whoever this guy is, I don't know. It's, there's no explanation for why the Detroit News is interviewing this guy. I saw an extremely bright light, said Mike Tarkowski of Milford. Milford's about 30 miles to the west of me. Everyone's, now listen to the, the quote continues of this, of this strange Milford resident. We don't know how the, this Milford resident got in touch with Detroit News or why the Detroit News is interviewing this person, but we haven't identified Mike Tarkowski as a police officer, but listen to what he says. Everyone's calling the police about it. How would Mike Tarkowski know? <laughs> Who is Mike Tarkowski? He doesn't, he's not identified as a cop, so I'm not quite sure why they're interviewing this guy except for, for this. I was watching television and it was pitch dark out. All of a sudden, the whole yard started getting brighter, kind of yellowish orange, like a flash bulb. Then it got black. It was something big and it was something up in the air. Okay, that's really interesting because what I just explained to you was something that sh shook the ground and I didn't see any light and none of the people I talked to saw any light. So right there we have this weird, weird thing. Now does he say, let's see, it was extremely bright. Everyone's calling the police about it. I was sitting watching TV and it was pitch dark. All of a sudden the whole yard started getting... Now he doesn't talk about it shaking or a boom. So his... He's literally describing something that happened up in the air. At the exact same time, I'm describing something that's shaken the ground and like three huge consecutive, like almost one big boom into three separate little teeny parts. Um, the weather service in White Lake said, the first report came in about 8.15 p.m. This is what the meteorologist reports. Somebody was reporting lightning with thunder. Okay, that I can kind of believe because it's Michigan and we're in the dead of winter, you don't usually expo expect lightning and thunder, but I'm still suspicious about why a resident would call the National Weather Service in White Lake Township, and who is at the National Weather Service in White Lake Township to take a phone call at 8 p.m. at night. So this whole report just seems so bizarre, except for that it does confirm the, the noise of the thunder sound, okay? So that, that's consistent with what I experienced. But somebody was reporting lightning with thunder, said meteorologist Corey Benke. We checked our observational data here, and I can tell you we've not had any lightning. Okay. Now, here's this Andy Losick, whoever he is. Lots of reports here of people from Chicago to Detroit area seeing meteor or fireball. We are just east of Lake Michigan and saw it due east of us. Okay, Andy Losick. You know, that's funny because we didn't see a fireball, but we sure felt one. Now, my friend who's in Kalamazoo didn't feel, hear, or see anything. So let's just go to this video really quick here. And uh, actually, I'll take you to it on YouTube here and play it in full view for you guys so you can see this. Now, I want you to notice, I'll just tell you what I observe here. Okay, this looks to me like it's right before the Jocelyn right before you get to Jocelyn Road, based on where this is, which would be almost exactly where my friend is, if this is even I-75, but I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it's in that area, because that's what they say it is, but I mean, I don't even know what to think about this, because look at, the timestamp on this is for 9.15.03. Now, it's possible, sometimes I don't change my clock in my car, so it's possible that it's the wrong time because this person just didn't. But why would you have a dash cam? I don't know. Anyway, it says here, anyone can use this video with credit. Russian dash cam for the win. No audio. Didn't hear any loud sounds. Okay. Timestamp is off. Happened around 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Looked really close. Look where he was. Northbound I-75 near Bloomfield Hills. That person was literally driving right next to the friend I had who was on the phone, who, who was in the car who heard the booms, but didn't see anything. See, so this is like the exact opposite of what my eyewitness on the ground actually heard, but didn't see. It's like the inversion of this. So anyway, now this is another strange thing. Hi, Mike. Um, can you give Fox 2 permission to use this on TV and online across our station? Thank you. Um, this is just, this has got, I mean, this is just really weird because it's, he says here, anyone can use this video with credit. So I don't know why, my, why Channel 2 would be asking for that. But if you do a quick search 
on Michigan, let me see if I can, oh, I'll just have to redo the query. But if you, if you do a search on Michigan, just for the last couple of hours, okay, let's just do a query here on YouTube. And we'll see, let's filter it for like, we'll just do it for today, okay? See Michigan in the title. title. Okay, what we have is, and I, I should have done a screen capture of it at first. What, what I first, when I first did this query, everything that popped up was news, was a news channel. WXYZ, 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 MLive. Okay, MLive actually posted before this Phil K did. Although now it's showing that, uh, well, it's, you're just going to have to take my word for it. <laughs> they were, this, this had no views and this one had like 500 views. So I'm not exactly sure why all of a sudden this one has so many views because I noticed that Phil K uh, had posted, this one was uh, up and running. People were watching this on MLive. So my, I guess my point is this. I, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused why all the news channels seem to have the, the videos before the people posted it. See, here's another one, Flash in the Sky, WXYZ TV, WXYZ TV. Um, I don't know. It just, it just seems a little weird. Me Meteor landed in Taylor, Michigan. Now, th now, these are the ones that I would expect to see a lot more of. Normal people, you know, Shady B TV, whatever. Video of Meteor hitting Taylor, Michigan on Tuesday around 8, 10 p.m. I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little perplexed why we have all the news reports here. Breaking explosion over Michigan. Are you serious? This was an explosion over Detroit, Michigan. And I mean explosion. I mean, hang on, folks. As you can see in the thumbnail, we'll, we'll be showing you and talking about it tonight. On uh, Our broadcast starts at 10 p.m. Eastern. But just a less than an hour ago, local uh, uh, hundreds of people. Who was that lady that uh, called? Susan. Susan called. Thank you, Susan, for calling. And uh, also, I, I got your email as well. And uh, Detroit has been lit up with an unbelievable fireball. Several hundred people have called in from all across the area in Detroit, Michigan. This was a meteorite. There's no question about this. And it? Okay, see, when I hear that, I just, I'm like, what do you mean there's no question about this? It didn't look like a meteorite, and maybe it is. I don't know. I, honestly, what do I know? I don't know anything. But it just seemed really strange to me that the first ones who get it, who have the news posted, are literally the news channels and the big, huge monster channels on YouTube. Just a very few, I mean, look at this. Who, who, this is, okay, Phil K. Let's just give Phil K credit for having posted this two hours ago. That's just one guy. And this Mike Austin dude? Mike Austin, his his channel, this this news, this this video was was embedded in this by nine by eight by nine o'clock. So within forty five minutes, the reporters at the Detroit News not only searched YouTube, but they found this uploaded. I mean, this guy had to have had this thing. They had to have found it immediately because this whole entire article was posted with this embedded in it by eight eight fifty nine p.m. I don't know. There's, it just seems like there's just something, something kooky going on here. The timing is just too, too perfect, and the article is just too weird. And the stuff that they're, it's like they're already having us focus up in the sky. And I'm telling you, nobody in my area saw anything. Now maybe there was something visible. I don't know, but I'm telling you, we definitely felt it, and that doesn't seem to be the big consensus here. And just the fact that the big YouTube channels and the news seem to have have this packaged explanation all of a sudden makes me wonder what the hell is going on here okay so uh, that young lady there is uh, being a, a very good uh, citizen reporter and uh, is my mic up yeah we're good okay and um, so I just watched that all the way through um, more or less for the second time, I, I had uh, scanned it, you know, you know, minutes before going on live tonight. So, so I just watched that uh, uh, video clip with you all, and um, some of the things that uh, this young lady is is uh, addressing is not so, uh, is yeah the event itself 
seems to be given a, uh, a pat answer by the big, uh, the, the, the big organized, uh, either the big YouTube, uh, monster YouTube channels, as she says, or, or the uh, corporate uh, news channels who pick up the story and then um, seem to be embedding uh, citizen reporters' uh, YouTube videos into the um, overall report on, on the TV, uh, uh, corporate TV uh, stations or channels. Now, um, the, the, the issue that she's bringing up uh, in terms of the physical event itself, the actual event itself, is you know, reports of light being seen and no sound, of no light being seen and uh, explosion, uh, uh, explosive sounds, uh, uh, and or and or both light and explosion. So I'm not uh, an expert on you know uh, social science on, on on how one could explain uh, a singular event witnessed by some hundreds, maybe thousands of people in a in a hundred mile radius or less and not have um, a solid, uh, consistent story. And, and, and I, I think for, for the purpose of argument, you, I, I would say, well, actually, you do have a solid, consistent story. There, was, re, there are reports of something happening in the sky o over uh, Taylor, Michigan, um, resulting in some of these reports an impact in the ground, but certainly uh, a noise and uh, in, in many reports and in many other reports uh, a, a light uh, and in, in, in still other reports both light and a boom. So you know a lot of, a lot of things as a sky observer myself I, I, I will personally say that you can be observing the sky and you know looking for something, you know, in, in my case I was taking photography, doing uh, still photographs of objects in the sky that uh, I, I wanted to monitor, and those were, you know, what I thought at the time were jet aircraft and, and putting chemicals in the sky in terms of a, of a uh, artificial jet trail. Um, so I can tell you that even when you're paying attention to the sky, you miss an awful lot because you, your, your focus wherever you're looking, and especially if you're framing something with a camera, that's what you're going to see. You're not going to see the other, you know, 340 degrees around you. You're going to see, you know, the, the, the window of sky that you're looking at. And since she was in her bedroom uh, listening or, see, you know, to a podcast or something, um, she wasn't necessarily looking out the window, was she? So she's not going to see anything. She heard the, the event. So she started to investigate the event by other people's um, reportings, and, and, and she found a real mixed bag out there. Um, this sort of doesn't surprise me, as I said, for the same reasons. You know, so if you're going north on I-71 or whatever it was in Michigan, uh, or M-71, and you see the actual... Uh, Fireball descending into the you know through the atmosphere to, towards Taylor, Michigan. Well, makes perfect sense. You're driving towards it. You're looking through the windshield. It's right in front of you. The dash cam picks it up. There it is. However, if you were in the same road but going uh, southbound, you're not going to see it. That's that's kind of the point that I'm making. But you might hear it. Um, um, I know, I know a, a person locally here who never goes out on the road in his, in his delivery truck without the ca dash cam on. And, and that is to protect him in, in the event that there is an accident. So if uh, a deer runs in front of you or a car swerves into your lane, you have a recording from your dash cam as to the, what actually did happen. So it, just, it can't just be you know, a made up story. Well, yeah, but that's sort of a rare person. That's what I'm saying. It, that, that was a real lucky find. And then for him to have posted it immediately on YouTube 
and then for the big media people yeah. to find it. That's what I'm saying. Is I have another one that goes more into the directed energy destruction of California. I only wanted to call it to your attention just to say that because we're public access producers and uh, and we're struggling with the town and the authorities and the big corporation, Time Warner Cable, right. doing business as Spectrum, that we want to give the best information that we can to the community. Otherwise, if we pass along other information, I have a feeling that there's investors that go along with public works, and they seem to think they have superior information to ours. Well, so I, I, I was I would, only looking at the fact that this came out within two hours. The and dash cam video, you mean? Uh, no, the lady, the lady that we just heard, that came out within two hours. And she already said, here's the big media guy that is out within 45 minutes. And already he had embedded in that report something that she saw because obviously she was fleeing, you know, flying to YouTube. Right. And, he, and she was disappointed that she didn't get a screenshot showing that the new guy, the, 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 the seemingly uh, standalone guy, had no views, whereas the media thing already had 500 views. Correct. And she wasn't able to show us that because and, and this happens to me all the time. You know, you don't take a screenshot right at the moment, and it changes really quickly. Correct. Just, just to show how the, the manipulation of traffic goes, that's all I meant. But we have another one if you want to see the destruction and the light. Now, is this, is this uh, also Taylor, Michigan? Yeah, the same place. All right, so, so what we'll do is we're going to roll, if not all of it, a, a portion of this next uh, um, YouTube clip. Uh, again, under fair use, this is for education pur purposes only. And that, uh, you know, do go out there and check this stuff out. And, uh, boy, he's got some real production. This is a highly produced piece. Yeah, this one has a million hits now. Hers only has 3,000. What's up, everybody? True Seeker here. Footage has captured what appears to be some sort of beam weapon lighting up the sky over southeast Michigan and causing a massive explosion on Tuesday night. Residents in cities across Michigan reported seeing a bright and colorful flash as it traveled through the sky before hearing a loud boom. Government agencies quickly attempted to chalk off the sighting as a meteor strike, but locals were left speculating that it was something more sinister than a natural occurrence. While press agencies like Washington Post joined the Department of Homeland Security and the USGS and NASA in claiming the event was a meteor strike, the picture seems to be telling a different story. Paranormal YouTube channel Secure Team 10 posted a video on the incident titled What Really Just Happened Over Michigan. Tyler from Secure Team says he has been in a day but pictures of a strange red beam was seen in the skies over Michigan when the alleged meteor struck. He goes on to ask what is the beam of light? What is the fire? Does it have something to do with this meteor? Something strange it seems has happened over Michigan. I don't know what, but I'm still trying to dig for details. Various claims has forced NASA into the unusual step of insisting the sighting was a space rock. They claim that the- Okay. Uh, we, I just paused it, you know, asked Paula to pause it for a moment so that I could comment. Um, this is an interesting uh, uh, video. It's, it's, it's very, very different flavor of dash cam than, than the, the one that we saw in the young uh, woman's um, posting. And uh, there, there's, there's different kinds of, of meteors. And there are meteors, I believe, that are called bolides uh, that may have... Um, porosities in them or uh, uh, they're, they're, what I'm trying to say is is depending on the on the composition of the of the meteor that's coming into the atmosphere it will behave differently in fact uh, if you're an avid sky watcher like I am uh, you can identify a variety of, of minerals and compositions by the, the color of the trail that a, a meteor will leave behind it and and uh, so, for example, a red, orange, or yellow, orange um, 
trail of a meteor will, will indicate a high uh, incidence of uh, iron. Uh, if it's uh, uh, yellow, uh, specifically yellow, it, it, it tends to be uh, sulfur. Uh, sulfur and iron are often found together, so orange and yellows and reds uh, will of, often indicate you know, a mix of iron and, and uh, sulfur. Uh, magnesium will leave uh, blue and, um, or blue-green. Uh, so, so different, you know, different colors uh, are, are, are to be expected. Um, now, the thing, the thing that struck me about both of these uh, videos of the object itself that was falling is now I've, I've looked at an awful lot of, of, of meteors and meteor showers, you know, in my lifetime. And you will see different, uh, you know, qualities. And, and one of the things that I find interesting in this video is that it's not moving very fast. Meteors, in the, you know, for the most part, are, are going in the you know thirty thousand to you know sixty thousand miles uh, per hour uh, speeds. You know, very fast speeds, and 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 that's why they look like a streak. When you see something that's, you know, uh, presumably that was in real time because it looks like the motion of the camera. You see how fast the yeah. the, the the vehicles are going. And this is what's very uh, interesting to me about this um, another, object. Another See, this this is a different one, right? Than what yes, hers this was. is a different. This is a different. And it also is at nine seventeen, not at eight seventeen. See, or or even before. Remember, she said the da the, the timing was off. Right, and then and now in the in the in the fellow's uh, own commentary about his his video, he says that the the, the uh, timestamp was wrong, and he said he corrected it verbally by saying it oh, was eight fifteen. Um, however, the the actual event. But her her boom was before that. Yes, eight oh eight. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same. Now the guys who went to Taylor, um, Michigan. There there's there is yet another um, citizen reporter YouTube, and I and I can't remember these guys' names. And we don't have it downloaded for you tonight. So that's uh, I I had actually hoped to have that one on as well. Um, now these two guys, right after the event got their cameras out, got in their cars because they were nearby Taylor, Michigan. They were a half hour away. And they went and they drove and they actually found uh, a location where something had uh, hit a garage and burned up a classic, beautiful um, Ford uh, Mustang, right. a classic Mustang that the owner of the Mustang had just gotten out of his car when uh, or was was in his car parking it when uh, he said a flash of light came through the corner of the garage uh, uh, above and to the left of him and struck underneath his car and started a fire under his car which made him exit the car and the garage very quickly and it had a full tank of gasoline and it ignited and had himself a, a, a fire going on in his garage. Uh, when, when the uh, two young guys uh, with their cameras got to the location, the fire department apparently had already put the fire out and they were uh, putting their, their uh, flashlights onto the scene to try to illuminate uh, for the benefit of the camera the situation there with, with the, the garage. You could see the, this a damage done to this um, uh, old Ford Mustang, and you could see that the, the the damage to the garage was very interesting. Now, they were saying that the the local um, police, fire department, whatever authorities were 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 putting the story to these two young guys that a fragment of the meteor had um, been blown off of the meteor when it, it, when it uh, exploded uh, above ground and that fra fragment uh, came at a tangential angle striking the corner of the uh, garage uh, going through the, the building itself uh, as a small fragment and then hitting the ground right underneath the, uh, the, the, the Ford Mustang where the man in it uh, and he still had enough time to get out of the car before um, before it ignited. Now his report was quite interesting because 
the, the, the man who owned the vehicle uh, was on camera briefly and, and you know, he said he saw light coming in through the corner of his uh, garage the, uh, to, uh, to the above and to the left. Uh, at least that's what it was on camera looking at it. Um, sometimes those images can be reversed, you know, depending on, on various technical reasons. But that's, what I, that's how I saw it. I viewed it. Anyway, um, so the two young guys were behind a chain link fence about, hard to say because it's camera work, and I, I don't know, you know, these kinds of uh, perspective uh, issues when dealing with, with a camera, but, you know, my eye was saying, okay, these guys must be somewhere between, say, 30 and 50 feet from the garage itself, uh, but they were close enough to pick up the the voice of the man from from that distance because he he had just gathered his uh, family from the neighbor's house or something and was bringing them back up into the steps into the house which was very close to the garage you know sort of like a then there was a little outdoor light there by the door so you could see everybody and you could see the man and and so they interviewed the man for a few minutes about you know what happened and that's that's what. Um, gave rise to, to my saying that, you know, his, his reporting of, of what happened to him with the light coming through the corner of the building. So here's the thing. When you, we're talking about high-speed impacts of, of, a, of a wood frame building by a piece of an object that exploded X number of feet, miles away in the air, and this meteor shrapnel, right? I don't know what else to call it. This piece of a meteor is, is being, you know, these young guys who are reporting, you know, filming this are being told that, well, this is, this is what's going on. And it went through the corner of the building and ignited the ground underneath the, uh, the, the Ford Mustang. And, and when I first saw that, I was thinking to myself, I don't think that at the kinds of speeds that would be involved with a piece of space rock, you know, going and blasting a hole through the corner of a garage would do such limited damage in looking at the thing. Now, also in that video, you see some really weirdly damaged uh, sheet metal in front of the garage and I do believe it was the garage door. I, I'm not entirely certain but it's a wood frame building and the garage door may have been one of those metal ones, that, that retractable metal ones and uh, it apparently had been blown off and, and kind of uh, crumpled in a strange way so you know we really, you really in the video you, it's at night so you, you know and they got flashlights going and there's a little bit of light from that house um, but you really couldn't dis discern what the metal was, but the guys who were filming were, 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 were talking about it, saying, look at that, it looks almost like you know, the, the, the destruction out in the California fires. I think they did mention that. Um, um, like I said, I'd really like to review that one again. But looking at the, at the car, you, uh, you see the same kind of damage on the Ford Mustang as you do in those California fires. Now, maybe it was just the gasoline burning off, I don't know. But you would think there would be much more destruction. What's your thought? Um, I think we set our, setting ourselves up for a really good show next week. Why don't we finish the rest of this, okay. which will have some of the California destruction, and then we can, um, you've whetted the appetite for the audience next week. Sure, okay. Because well, I think this is what public access should do. It, it should be, um, you know, like the court of public opinion. If we can keep putting the information out as honestly as we can... Yes. And check our sources. I bet we could get to the bottom of this. Well, there's there's also this idea, um, Paula, and that is that uh, you know Georgia's from the Show Me State. You know, I, I I really encourage this in everybody. You know, I I, I am a fan of a lot of uh, exotic ideas, and um, but you know, the fact of the matter is, is I'm I'm very practical in that. Is okay, somebody's telling me about these stuff called chemtrails. And what do I do? I go out and I get a camera and I start photographing the sky. I will, you know, that, and that's what I say to everybody. Don't take my word for it. Go out and look at the world around you. Okay, we can go back to the clip now. Okay. What? But I'm still trying to dig for details. 
Various claims have forced NASA into the unusual step of insisting the sighting was a space rock. They claimed that the light was meteor entering the atmosphere about 8.08 p.m., but many meteorologists say they have never seen anything like it. On Wednesday, on its Meteor Watch Facebook page, NASA said we have calculated that this was a very slow moving meteor, speeds of about 28,000 miles per hour. This fact combined with the brightness of the meteor, which suggests a fairly big space rock at least a yard across, shows that the object penetrated deep into the atmosphere before it broke apart, which produced the sounds heard by many observers. It is likely that there are meteors on the ground near this region. One of our colleagues at JSC has found a Doppler weather radar signature characteristic of meteoritic material falling to Earth. But something tells me that it could be a lot more stranger than what they're thinking to begin with. And this almost brings me back to a thing called directed energy weapons. These are known as direct energy weapons, or do. It's a range system that inflicts damage at a target by emissions of highly focused energy. Potential applications of this technology include anti-personnel weapon systems, missile defense system, and the disabling of lightly armored vehicles or mounted optical devices. I mean, this is something that our United States, Pentagon, DARPA, Air Force, and everybody has been working on for a long time. These are the different types that they have. They have the microwave ones, they have electro-laser, pulsed energy projectile, Dazzler. Dazzler is a directed energy weapon intended to temporarily blind or disorient its target. Amazing. It's probably like the god light, almost. They got the laser weapons examples of Project Excalibur was a United States government nuclear weapons research program to develop a nuclear pumped X-ray laser as a direct energy weapon for a ballistic missile defense. I mean, these, these are tools that they can actually use to literally destroy something without actually physically really touching it with anything but other than light. It's high powered concentration light or microwave that they're using on these. And these are really, really bad. I mean, this is some supersonic technology that if it gets in the wrong hands, God knows what could actually really happen. It's almost like some Independence Day looking kind of stuff. Directed energy weapons are weapons that have been in develop and they actually been in sci-fi films including Godzilla a long time ago. And these were ideas of making lasers as weapons and you could actually use these lasers to actually destroy things. You could incinerate things from the inside out. And when we're looking at stuff like the fires that's happening in California, for example, you see houses and everything just disintegrated. Cars that can handle temperatures up to a thousand degrees are nearly burnt to rubble. I mean, there's, there's definitely something more going on than natural wildfires and everything else. And I think this right here was a oops because it wasn't supposed to be seen by everybody. And now there's pictures of it. And I've already seen satellite photos of similar events like this, where you can see lasers actually shooting out of the sky. And it makes you wonder what stuff like this is. Now the military has actually been developed with technology like this for a while. And they're starting to think that maybe someone could actually fly these with an airplane and actually cause it. Does it make sense? No, of course it doesn't make sense. Same thing about 9-11, it didn't make sense. Everybody always asks, why would anybody do anything to harm their own people? And if you really got to think about it, it's about power. It's about control. If you have a weapon like this, you can make people go wherever you want them to, because now you're burning their homelands. You're destroying stuff all around it. This is actually some really dangerous technology. And if it's in the wrong hands, this is exactly what happens, it's stuff like this. Now, within the area, they were showing this picture of a truck that was caught on fire. As Tyler was saying in his video, he said that news later on made a report saying that the fire with the truck had nothing to do with this event. Yet it happened around the same exact time. I was trying to find pictures of the truck and I don't know if I'm looking in the right place or if they're not, or if they're purposely not trying to submit it because this is actually a big red flag because it's going to look just like the vehicles that was in 9-11.
It's gonna look just like the vehicles that was in the California fires. And it's also gonna look like the vehicles that was in an experiment done in China. And this tells you that there was definitely some kind of high direct energy weapon that was being used with this. This isn't new technology at all. This is not new. They've been literally developing this for over at least 20 something years. And why wouldn't they experiment with this? Why wouldn't they just see what the capabilities of their power is? People always keep saying, why would anybody do this to their own country and stuff like that? And I gotta keep saying, look at 9-11. Your answers are in the pudding itself. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. They don't care about any of us. It's all about power and controlling your families. 100%. This, this is definitely something really, really strange. And I think it definitely needs more investigation into it. I mean, I've, I've been hearing pieces here and there. A lot of people have been saying in my comments, you should talk about directed energy weapons. And honestly, I'm still trying to gather data. I want to make a better video about this, but it's just, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm dealing with. This is something that's really, really, really beyond what I have ever seen before. I've never thought they would actually be using lasers in this way. Now, I remember a couple of years ago, Mishio Kaku was actually saying that they use high power lasers to actually seed the clouds to try to make rainstorms and stuff happen. You guys don't remember that? I'll play a short clip of that right here. You know, they were talking about climate change yesterday, and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College of New York. Professor, nice to see you. Extraordinary seeing Al Gore and Bill Clinton there together with Charlie, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, they did not get into this discussion, no. though. <laughs> but it is fascinating. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. And so you could see that they've been trying to see what all they could use these lasers for. For a long while, they've been testing these lasers out. And these things are equivalent to actually get something to almost a million degrees, I heard. So, I mean, this is actually pretty insane. A million degrees, can you imagine that? A million degrees. We're talking almost like energy from the sun. Imagine if you could target the sun into a small beam and just point that whatever you want to vanish. Here you guys have it. I don't know, I'm gonna wrap this video up, but I'm gonna make a better video on this sometime later. I just want to gather a lot more data on this because this is actually pretty fascinating and scary at the same time. But people need to be aware of it. But what do you guys think about this? Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks for watching, everybody. So this is really interesting. Um, the uh, Michio uh, Kaku's uh, quick little commentary there about using uh, lasers to stimulate rain uh, from, from clouds is really suspect to me for a number of reasons. They don't have to, do use, they don't have to use lasers to do that. There's other technology. You can do that just, just fine. It's non-toxic. But anyway, the point is, is he, 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 he said a trillion watt laser. Or you can, you know, a, 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 a less than a watt pen light pointer laser can ignite a match, okay? So when you're talking a trillion watt laser, I, I wouldn't be pointing a trillion watt laser at a cloud or anything. I mean, I can't even imagine what kind of uh, disruption to 
the air, magnetic fields, all these other kinds of things uh, that would be associated with a trillion watt laser. I, I don't, I, you know, I can't even wrap my brain around just how much energy that is being focused into a beam of light, you know, this, you know, the diameter of a softball or something or of a baseball. So, you know, here we have, you know, uh, Professor uh, Kaku uh, talking about trillion, trillion watt uh, lasers. Uh, this should really alarm all of you out there because, you know, this is space weapons. These are, this is the kind of technology that I've been uh, kind of reporting about now for a couple of months and, and that we have to start understanding, um, is it Susan Clark, our, 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 sour, our cell tower expert? Susan Clark, you know, has been very adamant that I, I don't talk about frequencies, but I talk about wavelengths. And, uh, and, I, and, and I appreciate her um, focus on that. And the, 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 when you understand the kind of wattage that's involved in broadcast uh, energy or requirements for a cell phone transmission, we're really only talking, again, like really fractions of a watt per, I don't know, eight miles or so. It's not, you know, and, and these cell towers are going up all over the place. Um, it's like, for example, you know, our local uh, 104 uh, radio station. Do you know what the, what the power out is, uh, outages that is? So they're 100 watt broadcast FCC licensed radio station up here on Meads Mountain, on the shoulder of Meads Mountain. And that uh, signal in line of sight can be picked up how far away? 100 miles? 50 miles? Now, if you're not in line of sight of, of that signal, you won't really pick it up very well or at all. Uh, and you can be quite close. But, you know, if, if uh, Felicia's antenna over there at 104 was up on top of, of Overlook, that 100 watt um, broadcast would go 360 degrees pretty much as far as the eye could see line of sight. So that's probably 70 to 100 miles in any, any given direction. And that's 100 watts. These cell phone towers that we see going on all over the, all over the, the area now and, uh, are being cabled up with power supplies that rival, you know, high KV power lines, you know. We're talking about very, very high voltage and, and, and amperage um, being, being uh, supplied to these towers that are supposedly for communications broadcasts. All right, that's not just innocent communications broadcasts that require that kind of power. They are powering up these devices for something else, and that something else is getting a nice benign little name called 5G. And that 5G is using wavelengths, bandwidths, wavelengths, uh, known to be weapons-grade um, uh, 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 wavelengths. Susan would be so proud of you. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm going out on a limb talking about this stuff because the, 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 the single largest industry right now, growth industry, is probably wireless t technology. And we are really, really shooting our collective selves in the foot here by not insisting on fiber optics. Everything that's being done with, with uh, our, our, our communications um, wirelessly is really, really not a healthy thing to be doing. 
it's microwave energy, it's radars, radar is microwave energy, and that microwave energy, again, microwave, wave length, okay? You gotta, you gotta connect all these dots here so you can understand what wireless technology really represents. It represents radiative, electro, electro radiative heat. Ultimately, it is heat, and that how it works, and the way, the way microwave uh, ovens were explained to me many, many years ago, is that the radio waves strike not the food that you're heating, but the water inside it. And it vibrates the water molecules, which creates the heat that cooks the food. So that, that, that's sort of a, a nutshell shorthand way of looking at what we are doing to ourselves when we have a, mic a microwave-driven technology such as a cell phone, Wi-Fi in your home, radio phones, so on and so forth, is, you know, holding that thing next to your head, you are heating the water molecules of your brain, of your ear, of all the tissues, where, wherever water is located in close proximity to those uh, wavelengths, they are going to get hot. Those molecules of water are going to vibrate, get hot, and cause damage to the surrounding tissue or to the tissue that it's a part of. This is the danger that I'm talking about with, with, with the microwave wireless technology. It's really not good. Uh, we, there are better ways of doing things. And certainly, as far as... Um, uh, the fiber optic uh, ability to, to transfer or carry information. Uh, all of your audio, video, uh, communication needs can be done with a cable, a fiber optic cable. And uh, I'm going to have to wrap it up. We're running out of time here tonight. I just want to really, you know, say that we need to uh, really start communicating together and. Uh, Let's move forward, everybody, to a uh, safer technologies and understand what's, what's going on around our world. And uh, thank you for watching Conan's show. We are going to keep up on this and other topics. Uh, keep tuning in. Yeah, watch. Come, come, come back next week at 7 o'clock.